Hi folks, it's good to see you guys once again. It's another pleasure of mine to bring three things that I learned this week video. How has your week been going? Mine has been going on well. My prayer is that the Lord will continue to be with us, to continue to deliver us, to continue to keep us faith. Even in the face of all this coronavirus going on, I know that the Lord will continue to protect us. And my heart and prayers goes to everyone who has been infected. My prayer is that as many that has been infected with the coronavirus, the Lord will heal them speedily right now in the name of Jesus. We decree by the name of Jesus Christ that the menace of coronavirus will be wiped off from the face of the heart in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Ayodeji Onifade and here are the three things that I learned this week. Uh, the first thing that I learned in the course of this week is that words and prayer, they don't die. Words and prayer never die. Look, every word and every prayer that you have ever said, they are life. <laughs> Don't think that the prayer that you said two years ago or last week or even today, that those prayers are dead. There might be issues and things that are going on in your life right now and the things that you have prayed about those words that you have said to yourself maybe you have even said to yourself like in two years time i'm going to be this in three years time i'm going to be this look words are alive words are living and i want you to be mindful of what you say to yourself you know in the course of the week i was in a conference and a man of god came to pray and he made mention of this statement and this statement jumped at me one of the words is that every word and every prayer that we have ever made are seed in our life he said those words and those prayers my you must have released them into the air. To you, you might think there's nothing that they are dead, but they are still alive. Just like a seed, when you sow it into the ground, the dirt cover it. You don't see what is going on beneath, beneath the dirt, but the so, I mean, the, the seed is dying, but as long as it's dying, it's alive again. It's bringing new life. It's, it's bringing root. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, a, 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 it will just sprout out and then life will come again. That's exactly the same way our words and our prayers are prayers don't die they are alive they are speaking for us right now and that's why i'm going to encourage you that you might you are you are to be mindful of what you say say good words to yourself say encouraging words to yourself to your spouse to your children to to your brother to your friends to people around you stop saying negative words stop confessing negative things about yourself remember the scripture says that it's power in the tongue what you say it's alive even when the bible said that the word of god is alive and it's living words don't die words Words are alive. And that's why when you bless someone, they are blessed. When you curse someone, they are cursed. And, I, and, and today, I want you to start blessing yourself. Start saying good words to yourself. The prayers that you have said in the past, yet you might not have seen the results of those prayers. Yet those things may, not, may have not come into fruition. But I want to tell you, I want to remind you today, don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop saying good words to yourself. Words and prayer, they don't die. Words and prayer, like I said again, again don't die. The Bible said that pray without sin just keep praying just keep saying those words to yourself and eventually and in time in god's old time those words will come to pass and the second thing that i learned in the course of the week is that never ever stop dreaming i want to say that again never stop dreaming i don't know the kind of dreams that you have right now i don't know those things that you have aligned for yourself that you feel like you're going to achieve in certain time maybe in two years or in three years or in four years don't ever stop it the moment you stop dreaming that's when you die the moment you stop dreaming that's when you give up on life the moment you give up on your dream your dreams you might have told it to people they might have told you that that's crazy that's that's never going to happen that shouldn't stop you from dreaming what are you dreaming of you're dreaming of starting your own business you're dreaming of getting married you're dreaming of buying that dream car of yours buying that dream house of yours you're dreaming of dating that girl you 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 have one particular dream your your dream might not make sense to me why because i'm not the one who had that dream i didn't dream that dream you dreamt it so hold on to your dream never stop dreaming you know we 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 should keep holding on to the dreams that we have and pursue those dreams because the moment we allow those dreams to die that is when we ourselves as individuals we we do that Joseph was a man like that. He had a dream when he was 18. He told his dream to his brother and his parents. They said, are you mad? You mean that we're going to bow down to you? You know, he kept on to that dream. He kept holding on to that dream. Even while he find himself in the Potiphar's house. And when Potiphar's house wanted Joseph to sleep with her so that 
he can be the master of his house. I'm thinking that probably they'll probably plan to eliminate Potiphar, but because of the dream he had, because he never stopped dreaming, he had seen himself. He knew where he was going. He had seen himself to be a great star. He had seen himself that words and people will bow down to him. And he felt like Potiphar's house was not this place of his dream. And what, you know what? He didn't stoop so low to sleep with Potiphar's house. And that's what I'm going to encourage you right now. Hold on to your dream. Don't let that dream die. I'm speaking to someone right now as you're listening to this video. You are at the verge of giving up on your dreams. I want to encourage you today. Don't give up on those dreams. They might have told you it's not possible. They might be telling you where you're going to get the money. They might be telling you it's not possible for you to get that visa. They might be telling you that this can't be done. It has never been done before. Hold on to that dream. God didn't give them the dream. He gave it to you for a purpose. If you can dream it, then you can achieve it. Hold on to your dream. I have so many dreams in my life that... That, that, that was a point in my life that I felt like, you know, I, 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 this thing can't happen anymore. I've passed this age. I've passed this thing. People of my group, of my age, of my color don't do this thing. And when I stumbled upon this word this week, it kind of rejuvenate and revigorate me to say that, look, I need to hold on to my dream. So I want to encourage somebody out there also that you need to hold on to your dreams. Don't let your dreams go. Don't let what anybody tells you to take you away from the dreams. It might, it might look stupid for them. That is why it is your dream. It's not their dreams. It's not our dream, but it's yours. Hold on to your dreams. You know, God is still telling me in my spirit right now that somebody listening to you, don't, don't let go of that dream. Hold on to it. Hold, hold, hold on to it. It's, it's a revelation from God. Most dreams are revelations from God. Hold on to what you have dreamt about. Hold on to the dreams of your life, the things that you want to become. And I can assure you, just like Joseph eventually fulfilled his dream, if we hold on to it long enough, if we don't stop dreaming, we would achieve what we have dreamt about. And the third and the final thing, that I learned in the course of the week is a quote. I think these days I've been coming out with a lot of quotes. It's one quote that touched me as I, you know, read through it in the course of the week. And I'm going to read the quote to you. The quote said that if you often feel tired, not because you have done much, but because you have done so little of what sparks light inside of you. I will read that again. You often feel tired, not because you have done much, but because you have done too little of what sparked a light inside of you. And that kind of resonated with me. You know, there are times in my life that I felt so tired. There are times in my, my life that I felt so, you know, physically drained, emotionally drained, you know, even mentally drained. And I find that usually during those periods of time, I find myself doing things that doesn't really spark life inside of me. You know, a lot of us are out there. Statistics have shown that a lot of people who go to work, who has a job, are not happy at their place of job. Little wonder we get tired. I remember when you love doing things. I like to play soccer. I like to teach. I like to preach. When I'm doing those things, I'm alive. Like what I'm doing right now, I could do it all day, every day. I never get tired. And this is why I'm going to encourage somebody out there. Don't spend your life or waste your life doing things that is not sparking life inside of you stay out of that relationship that is drawing so much energy out of you don't 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 invest your time and your energy in 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 things that will not spark life of you look life is so short life is so short my brethren you need to start doing things that will make you happy oftentimes the reason why we get drained and so tired and so fucked out is because we are not doing the things that we are enjoying we are the things we enjoy we are not doing the things that bring life out of us that bring fulfillment and if you are spending time in those things you're going to get tired it doesn't matter how easy or how simple it might seem as long as it's not what brings spark out of you you are going to get tired and my advice to you today is that look at those things that spark life out of you look at those things that bring life out of you look look at those things that when you do them you are tired of doing them but you're not never tired of doing them there are things that if they call you to come and do those are the things that bring life to you spend time with those things there are people in our lives that they just draw and drain power out of us you don't need to spend your time with such kind of people you don't need to be in a relationship that is abusive that is draining you be with people that bring slide out of you be, be with people that encourages you and spend time in endeavors that brings light out of you and i want to assure you that as soon as you begin to spend time 
in those areas of life that sparks life inside of you you will feel your life coming back again you will feel yourself enjoying life again and life will make a lot of meaning to you and this is where i drop the anchor on this week three things that i learned this week video and like i always say if this video has blessed you feel free to share it with your friends or leave a comment for me in the comment section below and until next time like i always say never stop learning and be that which god wants you to be amen